Hello. For our A3 EL instructional strategy today, we are going to be presenting um, something that I'll tell you about in a second. I'm Kyle. Janet. I will be the teacher. Sophia. All right. Off we go. All right, so the strategy that we used is basically um, I wanted to take this from a lens of, can you see me? Good, sorry, hi. Okay, <laughs> all right, so I wanted to like look at this from a lens of, um, I'm a science teacher, so I teach a lot of vocabulary, and a lot of it is really wordy and jargony kind of, and I'm sure in history too, mm -hmm. there's a lot of that as well, right? So the strategy that I picked, that we picked, is substituting a known word when unable to pronounce or grasp an unfamiliar word. So if I'm trying to teach something that's really confusing or wordy or just, a crazy word, you know, like heterozygote or something, you know, some gnarly science thing. Um, I really like this strategy because you basically just replace that unfamiliar word with something that's easier for them to digest, maybe one that's shorter, one that has more familiar like phonemes and stuff, something that's gonna be easier to pronounce and understand, maybe something that has context to that EL learner's life more than just like some wordy science jargon. So, when to use this, it's really great when the student's having trouble pronouncing it, so to just teach kind of the etymology of it a little bit. Uh, when a student doesn't recognize it, it's really great. And also when a student has a hard time linking context and bringing context, right? So just giving them some words that might have more context for them. Okay. And um, we're going to talk about pros and cons for pros. Um, it can always be each, uh, each student's level. Uh, we can customize, uh, if the student doesn't have a very vocabulary, we can start from a very simple, easy word. And if the student has pr a proficient level in English, then we can kind of bring up the level of vocabulary and can easily access students' understanding. Um, they can understand it right away if, if you uh, replace a word, substitute a word to another word and can help students to broaden vocabulary by giving them a lot of different words that, uh, the synonyms, synonyms to that word. And uh, each student's personal context to build understanding, uh, that we can use that to help students to uh, build that understanding. So it's just very, you get the instant uh, effect by substituting another word. And for the cons, um, word replacement is not always available. When we try to find um, a word to substitute to uh, some discipline words, it's really hard sometimes, so that's one of the cons. And uh, it depends on the vocabulary knowledge of each student. So it's, it's really important to know student's level. So that's, um, we have to take multiple steps to find the uh, perfect fitting words to it. So, so we're gonna do the demonstration. Me being the seventh grade uh, newcomer student from Korea, and Kyle being a teacher. Uh, is it science? Yes, yeah, it's gonna be for science. Okay, so uh, this is based on some of the stuff that I have been teaching um, and encountering. Um, so one, these are words from like a genetics unit, so stuff that, like DNA kind of words, and then these are like astronomy words. So this is something that you might encounter in a typical middle school science curriculum. All right. So Janet, I saw that uh, in the last unit on genetics that you really struggle with a lot of vocabulary. And I know it's really hard. There's a lot of big, crazy words, right? So let me try and see if I can <coughs> replace some of those big, crazy words and help you out to help you understand what's going on, okay? Yes. All right. So replication, I know that was one that, that you were struggling with. And I know a lot of kids were struggling with that too. It's kind of like a big, crazy word. What's that mean, like replication? Replication. Replica. Replication. 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 It's a big replication. word, but you're, you got it. You're saying it good. So the way I like to think about replication mm -hmm. is it just it's just a super fancy way to say copy. It just copy. means you're copying something, right? Like when you copy something down, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. So like when you copy that DNA, when you replicate the DNA, you're mm -hmm. just making a, a copy of the DNA. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Nice job, Jen. And then also for this crazy big word right here, phenotype. That's another weird word too, phenotype. Phenotype. Phenotype, yeah, it's kind of a weird word, right? Mm -hmm. That silent, or no, not that silent, but that P is acting like an, like an F, it's really confusing, I get mm -hmm. it. So the way I like to think about phenotype is it's basically just a fancy way to say what somebody looks like, what their appearance is, right? So my phenotype is I have brown hair, right? I see. 
that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So hopefully that clears things up. Let me know if you have any other words that are really, you know, you're really struggling with. You can try to get like a, thes a thesaurus out. I have them in my classroom, and you can try to find some some synonyms, right? Remember we talked about those a little bit. Synonyms are words that mean the same thing, but just mm -hmm. different word, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I wanted to try to give you a little bit of uh, a leg up on the unit that we're doing next on astronomy. So here's just two words that I thought might be difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just start with this one, nebula. 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 Have you heard that word before? No. No? So that's actually just a space cloud, in fact. It's just a cloud. So imagine, you know, like clouds, right? Just a cloud in space, right? It's just a super cool cloud. All right, and we'll talk more about them and what they do and what they're for, but for now, a nebula, cloud, uh -huh. right? Awesome. And so this, I put two different words, because you might see both of these, but they mean mm -hmm. the same thing. But they're both a little confusing. So we have revolve, revolve. and we have orbit. orbit. Nice. Exactly. So the way I like to think about that is it just means to go around. Just to go spin. Around. Spin around. Go around, right? So like when you have planets like Earth, yeah, it's just like that. Just like Earth spins around, right? Exactly, right? And when you take like a, like a top, you spin it, right? It's orbiting around its, itself. Yeah? Thank you. Sound good? So let me know if there's any other words that you encounter that you need help with, and we can try using this strategy. All right? Let's jump. Thank you.